Can you believe it is already May? I can't, but I am so happy to see the world turning green. I am loving watching the trees fill in and learning which ones are not going to fill in so that I can better understand what I'm going to be able to plant in my garden. And slowly but surely I'm making progress. Do you remember my adorable old little boho cottage that I just left a few months ago? Well, it's got some new furry little residents. A mother kitty came through and found a little hole beneath the cottage and left these precious babies. And they're probably four weeks old, so she was with them for a while, but suddenly she didn't come back. And the lovely girl who lives in the cottage now heard them crying and dug through and rescued them. I knew you were the pig. With the orange <laughs> one. You're big. The big one. This was just a few hours after she had rescued them from the hole and another hour or two later they found another kitty down in the hole and they're all doing well. It's amazing how life works out because she had been dreaming of raising little baby kitties and they showed up right at her cottage. Aww, cuties. Meanwhile, in my new little boho cottage, I have come to the somewhat sad realization that I am completely full. There is no more space to decorate with. Hi, Em. <laughs> Charlie and I are going somewhere really exciting. Somewhere I have wanted to go, I think, I mean, I want to say my whole life, but a long time. <laughs> I don't know how excited he is about this, but I'm pretty excited. We're going to Estique Island where the wild horses roam free. And um, yeah, I'm so excited. This is just a quick little mini vacation and meeting a friend down there. <laughs> and I put on chapstick and Charlie really, really wants to lick it off, which is just gross, buddy. That's gross. <laughs> but um, yeah, so taking a little road trip, it's raining and I just got a brand new windshield. So <laughs> it was not fun how I needed the windshield. A tree actually fell out of the sky. <laughs> And a big huge branch landed on me it was so loud the cracking of the tree that happened before it fell and it was kind of it was almost dark and so when it happened I actually like I didn't know what happened it came out of the woods something came flying at me and at first I was like oh my gosh was I just shot because it hit my windshield and shattered it um yeah but now I see because I went back and looked and there's yeah a really large tree and there was this big thick branch that came down that looks kind of just like yeah, it's just huge. It could have done, it could have really been bad. So I'm grateful. But now I have a beautiful new windshield <laughs> that I'm looking out of. And the other one was covered in sap that I just could not get off. So that's pretty exciting. I guess you have to just celebrate the little things in life. <laughs> but I'm often filming through the windshield and it was just so gross. So this is pretty exciting now that I can film through my clean windshield. <laughs> Every time I cross over the Delaware Memorial Bridge, which goes over the Delaware River in the Delaware section of the river, I'm just a little sad because now I live up in upstate New York and the Delaware River looks like this. It's so beautiful. It's one of my favorite places to go to. And I even swim in it. It's so clean. So it really makes me sad when I go over the bridge here and look at what the Delaware River looks like in Delaware. I would never swim in it. A few hours later, I made it down to Maryland and you cross over this big long bridge and that takes you into Assateague Island where the wild horses roam free. I am so excited for this. I feel like it's gotta be a good day for horses, right? I just really wanna see horses. want to see horses please 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 <laughs> sighting oh my gosh that's just so crazy there's just a horse on the side of the road <laughs> we went to the national park there where admission is $25 and that lasts for an entire week so I think that's a pretty good bargain hey buddy <laughs> what you doing in there you wanna go potty you wanna go potty you having a good ride 
I grew up in Delaware where there are beautiful beaches. The beaches are very, very crowded in the summer though, and I never really enjoyed the crowds, and I now really don't like the crowds. It wasn't until I visited San Diego and went to a kind of empty beach one evening that I realized how much I like emptiness on a beach, and I have now fallen in love with being on the beach off season. We sat on the beach waiting to see a beautiful wild horse run by, but we did not see that. Instead, Hi, we guys. saw them wandering around, having just the best time out on the road. They own the roads here on the island, which was really fun to see. <laughs> this one's very proud of itself. Exactly what I needed. Life has been a lot lately, and truthfully, it's been quite a long while since I've been able to take a little vacation. So we were here for just two days. That's not a very long time, but it was two days that made such a difference for me breathing in the salt air, seeing the beautiful weather, the beautiful animals. It just made my heart so happy. Now, I think like most people, my dream for seeing the wild horses is to see them running through the waves. And it happens, it does happen here on the island but I got to see quite the show just as we were driving around. And we did hear from the park ranger that in the morning and then in the evening, dawn and dusk is when they tend to get a little bit frisky. And so I did get to see quite the little show one evening. almost felt like they enjoyed playing around with us with our cars. It was pretty adorable to watch. This guy's going nuts. Oh my gosh, they're playing. Into the sweatpants. <laughs> it's fun to be at the beach when it's cold. It's very nice that there's no one here and I'm waiting for the wild horses to go running across the sunset and they're not cooperating. <laughs> When I got my little Charlie, I got him just as a two month old puppy. I had wanted to rescue a three year old female. That was kind of what I was looking for, but it was during the pandemic and it was virtually impossible for me to get my hands on a puppy. Everybody was adopting. And so I got Charlie and let me tell you, he was a crazy little puppy. So he's two years old now, just turned two. And this little trip, felt like the first time where we've entered into the phase where I get to actually know him as an actual little dog instead of a crazed little puppy. Let me see. 
It was around 3 o'clock in the afternoon when I arrived at the park. We were now leaving as the sun was setting, so that really wasn't that much time, but it felt like a long time and I loved it. So I count that as day one and it was a good one. And then there was day two. What a beautiful, beautiful day on the beach. When anxious, uneasy, and bad thoughts come, I go to the sea and the sea drowns them out with its great wide sounds cleanses me with its noise and imposes a rhythm upon everything in me that is bewildered and confused. I love that quote. <laughs> He's such a weirdo. Come on, ready? Let's go. <laughs> I decided to pick a beautiful little spot where no one was on the beach and just enjoy the sunshine and the beautiful weather and we thought for sure the horses are eventually going to come running by us. Oh my boy, you're tired. I've been at the beach all day. The horses never did come and find us on the beach, but that was okay because it really was such a delight to be out there, to have a fire, to have no noise but the ocean around us, to just truly, truly relax. I am so grateful for that day. There are many campsites right along the shoreline here, and I stood and watched people setting up their tents, and I thought, wow, that must be absolutely amazing to sleep under the stars, to hear the ocean, and possibly to wake up with some horses running by you on the beach. I know that I will definitely be back to this beach, probably often, because I really fell in love with it. Charlie, say hi. Say you love the beach. Can tell everybody hi? this is not our beach day because yikes it is just a cold and rainy day and I filled up with gas and I thought about something that I think about it all the time when I'm in Delaware because in New York you are not allowed to click the little gas pump and then walk away like you have to stand there and hold the, the gas I don't know if it's like that in other states in New Jersey you are not allowed to even pump your own gas, so you just sit in your car. But I get so excited when I'm back in the Delaware area. And you can pump your own gas, you have to pump your own gas, but you can click the little knob and then walk away so that if it's cold, or in this case, like the rain was pouring down right where I was trying to fill up with gas. And if I was in New York, I would have had to just stand there and get poured on. <laughs> but here, because I could click the little button and walk away. I didn't have to <laughs> and I really get excited about that every time I'm in Delaware which is funny since I was raised in Delaware so 
I, I never realized that, you know, that was a wonderful thing that we have in Delaware. <laughs> I'm sure there's a reason safety-wise or something why in New York they don't let you do that, but they're all disabled in New York. So now I'm back on the hunt for some fabulous thrift stores while Charlie is sleeping in the car because he's exhausted from being a wild man at the beach. He does not have like an off button. Like a dog, normally dogs and humans, <laughs> as they go and they do things active and then they get tired, then they stop and they naturally, like instinctively, your body says, I need a nap. And with dogs, I mean, they just curl up and they take a nap. He does not have that. Like that instinct is not there. So he just can't shut off, especially in a new place where he's overwhelmed a bit. It's like doggy ADHD a little bit or just overstimulation. Um, so yeah, he's now exhausted because after two days of literally not stopping and coming down, he was at the beach digging with his eyes like closing, but he just couldn't stop. So he's now gonna take a nap probably for like two days and it is like really boring. So I'm gonna hit the road. I did not find anything in this Goodwill other than a lovely Haitian lady who was willing to practice French with me. So I looked up another thrift store and it took me to kind of the middle of nowhere in Lower Delaware. But this was the most adorable little shop. She had a whole room that was just old lamps and I would love to come back sometime and really check it out. I cannot remember the name of this store, but I do remember that the lady working there told me that it used to be the old firehouse for the town and now it's something way more fun. I really fell in love with this lamp and it was such a good price, just $25, but I genuinely have absolutely nowhere to put it, which made me sad, but that's okay. There are so many other little treasures to be found, but my rule right now is something coming in means something has to go out, so I have to love it more than things I already have. Like, I thought this picture, which was $5, was a really great deal and I love it, but I'd have to take something else out. I spent a few more days in Delaware with my family and then made my way back up to upstate New York where thanks to all of the rain we've gotten, things are looking pretty green. <laughs> I don't know if you can see, but I got home and birds have just like, I don't even know how it's possible. Like there's nothing to really sit on. The ledge goes too far out, but somehow birds have just pooped all over my door. <laughs> it's really disgusting. <laughs> But, yeah, it's a mystery. I have been at war with ticks this season, so the first thing to do always is to weed whack back all of the areas with grass for Charlie. I'm finding all kinds of little surprises popping up, flowers that I don't already recognize or know as they're coming out, and that's a lot of fun, so We'll see what the next few months bring as these buds start opening up more and more. Oh my goodness, it just does not stop raining. Stop. <laughs> stop. Hey, listen to me. <laughs> okay. All right. Um, sunshine, come out. <laughs> okay, it doesn't always listen to me, apparently. <laughs> so yeah, that is going to be my supermarché. Everything I plant that's food is gonna go in there because I'm fortunate that that's there. And it's got one, two, three, four big boxes. I'll put in some more pots like I have, tomatoes and stuff. And then I'll know that they won't get eaten, or most likely they won't get eaten. And then everything out here, I'm pretty excited about this, is going to be herbs that animals don't like eating, but that I love eating, and flowers that animals typically don't like eating. So because of that, I could take down all the fencing. And now I can just have what will hopefully become a really beautiful space. Of course, first things first, you have to get things in order. So I'm getting boxes that I've been pulling out of people's recycling bins and getting them laid out to block out weeds. It's been a lot of work getting this all with the boxes and the mulch, but I know it's worth it in the long run. It will make summer so much easier as far as weeds go. 
me that I'm someone who likes instant gratification, putting in lots and lots of work in the garden without really seeing anything too pretty is a little bit challenging, but I know I just have to keep telling myself that it's going to get pretty. It really is going to get pretty. Here's my garlic that I planted in the winter, and I'm so happy it worked. I wasn't sure because I planted it when it was snowing. And then this beautiful sage plant was tucked away in my supermarché, but I brought it out and it's my first beautiful growth in the garden right now. Thank you so much for watching my video. I hope you enjoyed it, but more than that, I hope that you're having a wonderful, wonderful week.